subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening welcome to South Asia Newsline I'm Uzma Jafri here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday the 4th of March Indian PM Modi holds eighth meeting on Russia Ukraine crisis reviews evacuation progress Suicide bombing at Shiite mosque in Pakistan's Peshawar kills at least 30 And Sri Lanka hikes interest rates as inflation worries mount. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday held another high-level meeting on the Russia-Ukraine war that entered the ninth day and reviewed the progress of evacuation mission Operation Ganga to bring back stranded citizens. The meeting came amid reports of an Indian student being shot at in Kiev and hospitalized. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday held a high-level meeting on the Russia-Ukraine crisis and reviewed the progress of evacuation mission Operation Ganga. The meeting came amid reports of an Indian student being shot at in Kyiv and being hospitalized. Since an all-out war broke out between Russia and Ukraine, PM Modi has been holding a series of high-level meetings. As part of the evacuation efforts, thousands of Indians, mostly students who crossed over borders to Ukraine's neighboring countries, including Romania, Hungary, and Poland, have been brought back in special flights while the Ukrainian airspace remains shut. India has also sent some of its top ministers to the European countries to coordinate rescue and evacuation efforts. हार्किव कीव जैसा ओडिसा में सिचुएशन था नहीं हम सेफ थे बट फायरिंग वगैरह की समटाइम्स शेलिंग की आवाज आती थी तब डर लगता था कि वो एक डर होता है ये बिफोर दी कॉन्फ्लिक्ट बिगैन इंडियंस मेड अप अराउंड अ क्वार्टर ऑफ 76000 फॉरेन स्टूडेंट्स इन यूक्रेन बाय फार द लार्जेस्ट नंबर अकॉर्डिंग टू द यूक्रेनियन गवर्नमेंट डेटा एज द इवैक्यूएशन प्रोसेस इज गोइंग ऑन इंडिया हैज मेंटेनड अ कॉशियस स्टैंस abstaining from un resolutions against russia though india has appealed for an immediate cease fire in news from pakistan a suicide bombing at a mosque during friday prayers in pakistan's northwestern peshawar city killed at least 30 people and wounded over 50 the that toll was likely to rise substantially as many of the injured were in critical condition officials said no group immediately claimed responsibility for the attack A senior police official said that two armed men arrived near the mosque on a motorcycle and were stopped for a search by police on duty outside. They opened fire on the police and entered the mosque, he said. Police were still determining if both had carried out suicide attacks inside the mosque. Prime Minister Imran Khan condemned the incident and has ordered an inquiry. Unfortunately, these two have been killed. The final report is about the death of the victims and the victims. After that, we will share some more details with you. Moving on, scores of political activists have been held protests in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on Friday. Hundreds of protesters have gathered in Pakistan's Islamabad city on
दो गुना ज्यादा टैक्सीज लगाए जा रहे हैं हमने कोई मुफ्त की डिमांड नहीं की हमने कहा कि हम हम यूनिट के हिसाब से बिल देने के लिए तैयार हैं लेकिन हमारी गरीब आवाम के ऊपर जो आपने टैक्सीज की मात में जो नीलम जेलम का टैक्स है जो किसी सूरत कश्मीरियों के ऊपर नहीं बनता Local in the illegally occupied region have long been accused they have been at the receiving end of discriminatory policies of Islamabad that has failed to provide even basic facilities to them. There has been an uptick in violence in Balochistan province with several attacks and explosions reported since the start of the year leaving the Pakistan government in a fix. In a recent attack at least 3 people were killed in a blast in Quetta city this week. A recent surge in terror attacks in Balochistan province has left the Pakistani government in a fix. A huge blast near a police van in Quetta city on Wednesday evening killed at least 3 people and injured 24 others. Balochistan Chief Minister Mir Abdul Quddus Bizenjo said efforts are being made to disrupt peace in the province under a planned and well thought out conspiracy. No group claimed responsibility for the attack. but it came a month after at least 20 baloch separatists and nine security personnel were killed during armed attacks on two security camps in balochistan's noshki and panjgur districts ethnic baloch guerrillas have been fighting the government for decades demanding a separate state and saying the pakistan government has been unfairly exploiting balochistan's rich gas and mineral resources while displacing indigenous population in the wake of china pakistan economic corridor Meanwhile Islamabad based Pakistan Institute of Peace Studies has said the new regime in Afghanistan is also not helping in any way with rebels of the Tehreek-e-Taliban Pakistan which associates itself to Afghan Taliban targeting security forces analysts believe that dilemma Pakistan faces is evident as it itself has not recognized the Taliban regime while it seeks world recognition for the group in Afghanistan In news from Afghanistan the Taliban took control over Afghanistan last August following which donors cut financial aid constituting more than 70% of government expenditures and about dollar 9 billion in Afghan central bank assets were frozen the move accelerated an economic collapse fueling a cash shortage joblessness and hunger Senior Taliban leader and the first deputy of the Prime Minister Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar has once again called on the international community to remove sanctions on Afghanistan. Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar, the first deputy of Afghan Prime Minister in a conference on Thursday once again called on the international community to remove sanctions on Afghanistan and give Afghans an opportunity to play their role in the economic development. inside and outside the country speaking at the conference of the national private sector to assess the opportunities and challenges lying ahead of the afghan private sector baradar emphasized that nationwide security has been provided in afghanistan and the ground is paved for trade and investment like never before the taliban authorities like international recognition months after overrunning kabul last august as last us led international troops departed ending 20 years of war Donors cut financial aid constituting more than 70% of government expenditures and about 9 billion US dollars in Afghan central bank assets were frozen. Many Taliban leaders remain under US and UN sanctions. The moves accelerated an economic collapse, fueling a cash shortage, joblessness and hunger, prompting UN warnings that more than half of the 39 million people face starvation. Earlier this week, the World Bank Board of Executive Directors has approved a plan to use more than 1 billion US dollars from a frozen Afghanistan trust fund to finance urgently needed education, agriculture, health and family programs the bank announced. The plan which will bypass sanctioned Taliban authorities by dispersing the money through UN agencies and international aid groups will provide a major boost to efforts to ease country's worsening humanitarian and economic crisis. Moving on Sri Lanka's central bank raised rates as expected to curb growing inflationary pressures and urged the government to consider measures including curbing non-essential imports and raising fuel prices to overcome economic challenges being faced. 
the Central Bank of Sri Lanka CBSL raised the standing deposit facility rate and the standing lending facility rate by 100 basis points each to 6.50% and 7.50% respectively to curb growing inflationary pressures. CBSL in a statement said that domestic economic activity has been affected by recent adverse global developments and surging commodity prices that have disrupted supply chains and power supplies. With foreign exchange reserves dwindling, Sri Lanka has been unable to pay for enough fuel to fire its power plants and the country has implemented rolling power cuts to over seven hours across the country. CBSL made a list of recommendations to the government asking it to incentivize remittances and investments further, curb non-urgent imports, raise fuel and electricity tariffs, monetize non-strategic and underutilized assets, among other things. Earlier this week, International Monetary Fund said Sri Lanka needs to tighten its monetary policy to contain rising inflation, put its high debt repayments on track and reverse one of the worst financial crises the country has faced in years. Sri Lanka's reserves have plunged 70% since 2020, dwindling to 2.36 billion US dollars at the end of January. But the island nation has debt repayments of about 4 billion US dollars this year. The dollar scarcity has prompted some analysts and rating agencies to warn of a potential default. On Thursday, Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa appointed new ministries for energy and power, the President's press office said, after a snap cabinet reshuffle in the midst of a deepening economic crisis and fuel shortages. Power Minister Gamini Lokuge has been appointed as the Energy Minister, while Transport Minister Pavitra Vanai Rachi was made the new Power Minister. The ousted ministers Udaya Gamanpila and Vimal Veeravansa are coalition members of the ruling Sri Lanka Podujana Perumuna. Parliamentarian S.B. Disanayake has been appointed as the new Industries Minister. With the rise in global warming, protecting biodiversity and wildlife is now a serious concern for people around the world. Joining hands with the rest of the world to promote awareness, World Wildlife Day was observed in India's northeastern Assam state and Jammu and Kashmir territory on Thursday. Have a look. In a bid to raise awareness to conserve the wildlife, authorities in India's Assam State Zoo Kam Botanical Garden observed the World Wildlife Day on Thursday. The northeastern state of Assam is home to the world's famous one-horned rhinoceros and the zoo is one of the best in the country with an environment most akin to the wild. During the event, a special documentary on wildlife was released and experts discussed about climate change and several other factors that pose serious dangers to the wildlife to mark the event. Jitne bhi hamare animals hain, unke conservation ki taraf dhyan diya jaye, kyunki they are the important part of our ecosystem. Aaj ka theme bhi yehi hai recovery of keystone species for the restoring of our ecosystem. Ab bhi dekh rahe hain ki haan global warming aur ye sab ho raha hai. The day was also observed at the Dashikam National Park in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory with cultural performances and screening of documentaries on wildlife. A protected area since 1910, Dashikam was declared as a national park in 1981. So, we to the Dashigam National Park is best known as the home of the Hangul or Kashmir stag, considered one of the rarest mammals in the subcontinent. The park is open throughout the year, but the best time to visit is between April and August. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Indian PM Modi holds 8th meeting on Russia-Ukraine crisis, reviews evacuation progress. Suicide bombing at Shiite mosque in Pakistan's Peshawar kills at least 30. And Sri Lanka hikes interest rates as inflation worries mount. 
now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com you can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on twitter at sasianewsline that's all in tonight's edition we will see you same time next week have a great weekend Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India breaking news and views from India